This video is going to show you how to divide your time between drilling versus rolling so you get maximum performance in the minimum amount of time. Hey everybody, Coach Tom here, here to talk to you today about drilling versus rolling. How do we as Jiu Jitsukas spend our time? Do we drill? Do we roll? Do we do both? If so, how do we split our time? I'm going to give you your answer today. But let's talk about this topic. This is so in debate right now. I mean, traditionally, Jiu Jitsu practitioners did both. You rocked up to training, you warmed up, you did some technical training, so you drilled your techniques, and then you rolled at the end of class. That's how most people have operated. This has yielded tremendous results. And now we're getting people saying, ditch the technique stuff, just roll. You'll get better. So what do we make of this, guys? Because chances are your academy is doing both, or maybe you're only doing one. And you know how should you compensate for that in your training? And I'm going to give you my two cents. And I've also asked this question to multiple world champions. And I'll also try and give you a bit of their wisdom and some reality checks along the way. So let's have a look now, guys, at drilling versus rolling. And what do each of those things achieve? Because they are very different. Okay? So if you just roll, you are going to get tough. Okay, if you are only rolling, you're going to get feared, you're going to have good grappling strength, but you're pretty much going to do the same thing you've done at the start of your career and you're going to get slightly better at it, but eventually your progress will come to a halt. We have seen big time Jiu Jitsu practitioners and without trying to name their names, the loudest voices in the just roll, it's all you need to do in that camp. They have done so well, but then once they get up to black belt, they can't seem to win to save their life. So we don't want to go down that path. Now, I've also seen so-called jujitsu black belts who say you shouldn't roll at all. You should barely roll. Just do technical training. And guys, I believe that's like never sparring in your stand-up, just doing carters or something man, you are going to have a rude wake-up call when you go to punch on with even a beginning boxer who's used to getting hit and delivering those strikes if you're just punching the air all day. So the same goes with jiu-jitsu. But now let's pretend jiu-jitsu is boxing for a moment. And two identical twins walked into a boxing gym. One, we'll call this guy Bob over here, Bob only spars. So he's rocked up to day one boxing and he's just sparring away, punching on with everybody. He's going to get tough, but he's not going to get that much better. He's going to get a lot tougher, but he's not going to get a lot better. Now we have Bob's identical twin, uh, we'll call him Bruce. So you've got Bruce over here who is going to just do pad work. So he's hitting the mitts, hitting the heavy bag, hitting the double M bag, the speed ball. He's developing his attributes. He's developing his technique. Now, if one year goes by and we put those two together, for the first few rounds, I expect Bob, who's toughened himself up, to do quite well. But then eventually, Bruce, who's been doing all the technical training, getting his technique, his attributes way up there, he's going to overtake. Once he gets used to the getting hits and dealing with that, he is going to overtake Bob every time. So let's make sure we're Bruce is not Bob's. But even better, guys, let's walk that fine line gray area and let's sit on the fence and let's do both. Okay, I think you should roll a lot. I think that's really important. I also think you should drill a lot. More world champions have told me that the secret to their success was drilling than world champions who have told me just roll all the time. Okay, if you're rolling, that's performing. But even if you are a world class musician, your practice and your performance are two very different entities. 
okay? We want to practice to get our techniques really, really refined to learn their intricacies and then we're going to pressure test them with rolling. It's the only thing that makes sense, guys. That is the formula that has built more world champions than all other training methods combined. So, if I was to split my training, regardless of my experience, I would go, say, a warm-up at the start of every training session. I would then invest time in technique. At least half of the time that I spend in the class is going to be on technique. The other half is then going to be live rolling. But I'm not just going to roll without any set of barriers or containers of where that roll can go. I'm going to do positional sparring. I'm going to start in my least favorite or most favorite positions of myself or my partner. So I'm not just going to do 100% free rolling. Free rolling will probably only encompass 25% of my total training time. So we're going to have 50% spent on technical training, drilling, performing reps, refining our technique. 25% isolated conditional sparring, like we start in guard, you need to sweep me, I need to pass your guard, and then 25% of the time free rolling. I have found as both a competitor and as a coach, that method yields the most consistently good results regardless of age or body type. Because let's remember, people who harp on about, you just need to roll, I have found that they generally are super athletes. And if we are now talking about you want to train a couple hours a day and you want to get really good at your jiu-jitsu, can you roll for two hours every day of hard rolling without resorting to performance-enhancing drugs just to step foot on the mats? My experience is natural athletes can't regardless of their natural athleticism. So before you take the advice of someone who's roided up who's just going to tell you to roll for six hours a day, ask if you can even do that. For most people, their best results from jiu-jitsu come from a balance of technical training, conditioning, which is getting us stronger or fitter or faster or more flexible, and then finally, resistance training rolling. Okay, but let's not forget about our last little part of the equation here, which is resistance drilling. Now, we're going to have a separate vlog on that, but I believe that's the strategy for the future. Something I've experimented a lot with my students to some great effect. So we'll be talking about that in the future. Look out for that vlog. For all other things, guys, YouTube, search, jump onto the grapplingacademy.com. I'm Coach Tom. I'm here to help you get better. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you loved it. For more videos, click here. And to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click here. Don't forget to check out our website at thegrapplingacademy.com here. I'm Coach Tom. I'll see you guys next time.